When you're thinking about some of the biggest video game franchises of all time, there's a strong chance that franchise happens to be a first-person shooter. Call of Duty, Doom, Battlefield, Duke Nukem, Chex Quest, Half-Life, Wolfenstein, all massive games, all first-person shooters. So it's not surprising that when developers are looking to make the next big killer intellectual property, they usually aim to make another FPS, because that's what draws people in. Of course, this genre is so overcrowded and oversaturated at this point that getting noticed is pretty dang hard. So if you're looking to break out and get recognized, you better have a pretty original idea or gimmick to hook potential customers. Disintegration is a new game from Marcus Leto, the co-creator of a little game you might have heard of called Halo. After years away from Bungie, Leto and his new studio, V1 Interactive, are looking to create a new sci-fi world for players to get lost in. Do they succeed? <laughs> I'm Jamie Latour from The Gamer, and this is our review of Disintegration. Disintegration, aside from being an annoying word to have to type over and over again, is centered around the concept of integration, which is a fancy term for yanking the brain out of your head and plopping it into a cool-ass robot body. You play as Romer Shawl, a world-famous grav bike pilot. In case you're wondering what a grav bike is, it's basically this. Now before I go any further into the story, it's time for a rousing game of Count the Science Fiction Clichés! Earth is now a ruined dystopia. Cities are in ruins and humans are now an endangered species. This is all thanks to an evil empire called the Rayon, a force of robot people with red eyes and giant prison ships who want to enslave both integrated people and the remains of humanity. They're about to brainwash Romer into being their pilot before he's saved by a ragtag crew of misfits, which includes the following tropes. The tough guy, the soulful one, the comic relief, the mechanic with a heart of gold, the family man who will do anything for his children, the wise old man who offers guidance, and eventually, Romer becomes the leader because he's the biggest trope of all, the cocky yet lovable hero who doesn't want to be a hero, but then becomes a hero through the power of friendship. These lovable ragamuffins must come together to form a cohesive unit, and maybe even a family, as they join the resistance to take down the Rayon and their leader, the evil Black Shuck. <laughs> So yeah, it's a sci-fi story. If you have even a passing familiarity with science fiction, then you'll be able to call Disintegration's story beat by beat. It's not that cliched stories can't still be entertaining, it's just that this one isn't. Moving away from the infuriatingly dull plot, the gameplay of Disintegration is all about using your fancy hover bike to fight the Rayon from above, while simultaneously commanding a squad in the air, turning the game into a mix between a first-person shooter and a real-time strategy game. This sounds like a pretty exciting combination. It is not. The bike is slow and awkward to use, especially in combat. It can be hard to see where all the bullets are coming from since you're often flying in the air, meaning that you'll constantly get shot in the back and from underneath you. The hitbox on the bike is also a little unclear, which means you might think you got out of the way of incoming fire only to still take damage. Speaking of damage, you only have two slots for weapons for your flying motorcycle and you don't get to determine what they are. You load into the level and you just have whatever the game decided to give you. Sometimes it's cool, like a rocket launcher or a chain gun, but other times you get stuck with piddly pea shooter assault rifles that make the fight become a tedious, boring affair. As for the real-time strategy elements, they are certainly there. They're extremely limited as you can only tell your squad to attack enemies, move to a position, interact with objectives or crates that hold resources used for leveling up, or use a special ability like a concussion grenade or a mortar strike. It feels less like real-time strategy and more like babysitting. Characters on the ground need their hands held throughout the whole game and often needed to be instructed to attack enemies that were standing right in front of them. The visual style, much like the story, is also nothing to write home about. There are some nice foresty regions that have a lovely autumnal feel to them, but aside from that, it's the standard gray, brown, and green destroyed cities, army bases, outposts, and scrapyards that you've seen before. Weirdly enough, it seems like they saved all the color and fun for the multi multiplayer portion of the game. Actually, that's not weird, because that's where all the sweet microtransaction money is. Seeing as how this game is from one of the Halo guys, you'd expect the multiplayer to be a pretty big deal. And it is. If by big deal, you mean middling and bland. There are three modes you can play, and out the few times I actually got to play them, worked pretty well. But honestly, I can't see this getting much of a following. And all it really made me want to do is go back and play some Halo multiplayer, which is probably not a good sign. In the end, Disintegration is literally just another sci-fi game. While it does absolutely nothing special, it also isn't notably terrible. I noticed no significant bugs, it controls well enough, and even though the story is just sci-fi mush, it's competently told with some decent voice acting. I just can't muster any energy to even remotely care about this game. Everything about it is passable, from the gameplay to the story, to the graphics, to the multiplayer, but when you're building a new franchise, especially one coming from the co-creator of Master Friggin' Chief, passable is not good 
good enough. It's a forgettable title that I predict I'll forget all about within a few weeks. Hell, I started to forget about it while I was making this video. Chances are that Disintegration is going to become another game that you'll find marked down to five bucks in a future Steam sale or in the bargain bin of your local gaming store. You know, if there are still gaming stores after the plague ends. That's why we give Disintegration three brains in a jar out of five. Thanks for watching, and be sure to check out our website over at thegamer.com. And if you like this video, why not check out some of our other videos and subscribe to our channel? It's just as fun as riding a flying motorcycle. Almost as fun. It's about as fun. I've never flown a flying motorcycle, so I can't, I can't really confirm or deny. Still good, though.